Hi there, welcome to this economics quantitative skills revision video looking at weighted index numbers. If you haven't already checked out our video on simple index numbers, that might be a great place to start. So what do we mean by a weighted index? Well, as a reminder, an index number is just a very simple statistical technique that allows economists to interpret data that uses large numbers and allows us to make comparisons between different pieces of data much more easily and quickly. A weighted index takes that idea and just combines a number of indexes or indices together. So a weighted index is simply an average index that, index that is made up of a combination of other indices. The two that you are most likely to have met in your A-level economics course is the Human Development Index and, the, and just a simple price index. So the HDI, the Human Development Index, comprises three different indexes. The first one is GNI per capita. The second is an index number that represents life expectancy. And the third is an index number that represents the number of years of schooling. Each of those three indices gives a number between zero and 100. And for the HDI, the Human Development Index, we simply combine the three. We just take a simple average of those three index numbers. Each of the three component parts is equally weighted. A price index is a little bit different. We have a set of indices that each represent price changes of different types of goods and services. Now, some of those goods and services need to have a higher weighting in the overall price index because we spend more of our income on them. And we're going to take a really close look at that in the remainder of this short revision video. So we're going to take a look at the CPIH, which is one of the measures of inflation that we use in the UK. And in this case, we're going to compare prices between 2015 and 2017 in the first instance. Now, what you can see on the screen are the ONS's specific categories that they categorise goods and services into when they're calculating inflation in the UK. And what they look at is the weighting of those different categories in our overall spending. So for example, utility bills that's highlighted there for you, that shows us that the weighting of 298 parts per 1,000 means that out of each 1,000 pounds that we spend, 298 pounds of that goes on utility bills, or to simplify that into a percentage, 29.8% of household spending is on utility bills. To take another example from the same list there, let's look at education. 1.8% of household spending is on education. It was 18 parts of every 1,000 or 18 pounds in each 1,000 pounds that we spend goes on education. So that's how the weights are determined. Now, let's take a look at the next step in the process, which is the index numbers that represent the prices in each of those categories. Now, to work out index numbers, We've taken a look at that already in a previous video on simple index numbers. So hopefully you're quite happy with that particular topic by now because we're going to use it here to help us calculate inflation. Now we can see in the top left hand side of the table that we're told that the base period is in March 2015, which gives us an index number there of 100. So for each of those categories in 2015, Whatever the average price was of goods and services in those categories, we equated that to 100. In March 2017, there was then another survey of the prices of goods and services in those categories. And that gave us a new index number that allows us to compare the prices of goods in that period with the prices in 2015. So, for example, in March 2017, the price of alcohol and tobacco was 5.2% higher than it had been in March 2015, and the price of education was 7.9% higher than it had been. That in and of itself is not enough to allow us to calculate the overall rate of inflation. We need to combine this with the weights. So the instructions are there for you at the bottom of the screen if you need to just pause and read that through carefully. But we're gonna work through this together to calculate the overall weighted price index for the UK. And to do that, we multiply the weight by the price index for each category, add them together, 
And then in this case, we divide by 1000 because our weights are all expressed as parts per 1000. So to have a look here, let's look at that first column, which is food. And you can see in the equation, the formula that I've jotted down there for you, that's the weight 82 multiplied by the price index of food 99.3. And then we move on to the second column, alcohol and tobacco, and multiply the weight 32 by the price index 105.2. And so on all the way to the end with our miscellaneous category. That gives us a figure which we then divide by 1000 to give us 102.7. What that means is that the rate of inflation between March 2015 and March 2017 was 2.7%. Let's look at the data now. If we add in an extra row there for the price index for each of those categories in March 2018. We can follow exactly the same process here to calculate our overall weighted price index. But there's a really great example here of why it's important to use weights. Just take a look at the circled bits of data there, the price index for utility bills and for furniture in March 2018. The price index for both is identical. So both utility bills and furniture experienced exactly the same increase in price of 4.7% between March 2015 and March 2018. However, Utility bills, if you remember, account for a much greater proportion of household spending than furniture. Utility bills is around 30% and furniture just above um, 5%. So we need to make sure that the weighting for utility bills is much higher in our overall calculation. You can see at the bottom there, I've jotted down the workings again, again, being very, very methodical. Take the first column, food, multiply the weight of 82 by the new price index of 102.3, then add that to the information from the second column, which is alcohol and tobacco, the weight of 32 multiplied by the new price index of 108.9, can continue with that, which gives you an overall value of 105.1. So what does this mean? So what it means is that in March 2017, we know that prices were 2.7% higher than they have been in March 2015. And in 2018, were 5.1% higher than they had been in March 2015. It's really important to take care here and not assume that the annual inflation rate in 2018 was 5.1%. To do that, we have to do something a little bit different. We have to calculate the percentage change in the price index between March 2017 and March 2018. The workings are there on the screen for you. And that percentage change is 2.34%. So the annual rate of inflation in March 2018 was 2.34%. There's some data there that's been added for you with the individual price indices for each of the categories for March 2019. If you want to have a go at practicing this again in your own time, grab yourself a calculator and a piece of paper and have a go at calculating the price index for March 2019. And then if you can, the annual rate of inflation in March 2019, which obviously you'll need the information from 2018. If you've done that and you want to check your answers, there they are on the top right hand side of the screen for you. So check away. If it's not quite right, just have another go. The more times you practice this, the easier it will be. Do check out all the other videos we have to help you with your revision, particularly the quantitative skills videos. Thanks for watching.